Is it getting harder, uh, so to speak, to move to Portugal? Well, maybe we should use the phrase more difficult. Your your personal observation and experience on this matter, Heather. Yes. Yeah, so it is getting harder. The last 60 days, 90 days, um, we've seen some changes in the responses that clients are getting uh, to their applications. We're getting some kickback. I, I always had clean approvals prior uh, and we're seeing some some weird things happening and, you know, starting to ask for the lease registration, starting to ask for birth certificates, um, which these are Americans, but born outside of the U.S. that had naturalized citizenship, you know, and um, uh, what else have we seen lately? Just uh, definitely the income piece uh -huh. has really shifted. And, you know, I know people that got approved uh, with showing no income and just assets, you know, and people will still make the argument that that works. Uh, but we've seen it not work. Um, and I had a client recently that, you know, had almost $900,000, um, was a couple years away, two and a half years from retirement, currently eligible for a pension right now that she wasn't pulling. And she was having regular savings move from one account to another. And they still didn't like that. Wow. Okay. Crazy. I mean, it's crazy, you know, uh, and uh, they they didn't even give good reason. They basically just cited income. And then um, and then I started seeing some other posts come up in some of the groups and uh, other places that were showing that same thing where they want to see, you know, things like the retirement income already being pulled and they want to see three months of it supposedly in the accounts in the previous three months. And, you know, right. things, things that a lot of people aren't planning for because like they've timed it, you know, like uh, they've timed it maybe so they're going to retire at the end of the year and they want to move like in, you know, right then. And so that's a little, it's, it's getting to where I had to go back and kind of recounsel a lot of people that I've talked to over the last year that were getting ready to apply or in process with me or whatnot. And the current applications we have that we're doing the next like 60 days, 90 days, uh, those are the scariest ones because we can't necessarily backtrack these changes. So I have at least one client that they're trying to push their appointment out uh, because of that, so that we have a, a, a more, I can more confidently tell them that, you know, this is going to be looked upon a good way. And, yeah. uh, and then of course we have the compounding problem of, um, Ceph disintegrating and turning into this AIMA thing. And, and we, these are all unknowns. We don't know how this is going to affect things, but we do know that things are getting backed up and that getting appointments is harder to get. And uh, a lot, I have, I have several clients right now trying to get appointments that, you know, are on there several times a day and refreshing and the whole thing and, and not, you know, not having much luck, but you have to just keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. But the, the income piece I think has really changed a lot in this. So the way that you need to structure things needs to be tweaked. And I think a, a lot of people out there maybe need some counseling and consulting to, um, make sure that they're up to speed on the latest and greatest. And this may change more is my guess over the next upcoming months when we have new processing or new uh, AIMA uh, organization that's actually doing the processing of the visas themselves. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you a couple of things there. So when you say a clean application, I think that's the phrase you use. That's when you just you send it in, it comes back and all is fine and nice and easy. And those were the golden days, weren't they, when that was happening? Is that what you mean by a clean application? Well, it, it wasn't nice and easy per se, but I, I know how to structure and, uh, you know, present. You know, yeah. uh, when I was managing broker, uh, I audited contracts. And when I was loan processor, uh, you know, I took people's raw data and I put it together in a nice package. and and presented that to the underwriter. And so, so, you know, these are skills that, that, that I've honed over the years to be able to take this content and present it in a way that it's going to be the most palatable and easiest and clearest to, uh, 
to, to go through the system, you know, yeah. and that, that had been working really, really well. And, and then we had a hiccup with a, a very, very, very well qualified client where it's not working well. And, uh, you know, you look at it and you go, well, what did I, what did we do wrong? Like what's going on here? And it's not a matter of that. And, it, and then I have one client say, well, what, what are the changes? Like, what's the legislation that changed? There is no change in legislation. Well, that's, that's uh, the thing I the, want to ask the, about next. Yeah, because these, these are interpretations, aren't they? And that's my concern about this. Is, is It's not fair because it's not the law, is it? And this is what we're beginning to hear. Is it's, it's the VFSs and consulates actually... Well, Making nothing's course. fair. Portugal is is the ultimate country for it's not fair. Well, really? Uh, Say more. Because what, 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 what makes you well, say that? There's no there's no consistency, and therefore equity. You know, like you go to a junta and you get an atestado de residencia, and then you go to another junta and they tell you that you aren't even qualified to get an atestado, you know, you have a right. lease and you have a visa. And I mean, yeah. we had, we had two sets of clients arguing this with a, um, a junta down South of Lisbon recently. And, you know, it, it just crazy stuff like that. And you never know because all my other clients had got atestados without issue. And then yeah. all of a sudden you have somebody who's like interpreting it that way or, yeah. you know, oh, you can do NIF submission online. And then, of course, in Caldish, no, you can't. And, you know, so it's the the person working yeah, yeah, at the, yeah. you know, the person you're dealing with has so much control. So yeah. that's what I mean by it not being fair specifically is that there's just not a consistency. And you could say that for any country probably – uh, and certainly for the United States in a lot of respects, too. Uh, but at the same time, this is scarier in the sense of, you know, when you're applying for yeah, things like visas and yeah. you're selling property and you're moving across the world and taking elderly parents and pets and the whole nine, yes. you know, yeah. so so the stakes are big. Uh -huh. And I, I, I find it really funny because you still have all these DIY people and people saying, oh, you don't need help and you don't need professionals and you don't need this and that. And that's cool. And maybe you don't, but maybe you do. You know, 95% of the information is there. Yeah. Uh, but what is right and what isn't? And nowadays, what's the most current? What's the most recent? What's, what's actually the pulse of what's happening right now? Yeah, and, and I, I, I would say, can I, yeah, I, yeah, I, go ahead. I so enjoy talking to you because it, it just prompts so many um, other questions uh, and uh, you know, <laughs> things occurring to me, um, especially on this on this subject because it's you know this is a, a a big big subject. It's an emotional subject for people, obviously, and it forms you know you, you can't come here without what we're talking about, can you? You've got to get your visa right. Um, and no, no, um, you can, but that's a really bad idea. <laughs> You can no. I, I literally just had people got on a plane, came here, didn't hadn't talked to anybody, didn't know anything, like literally right. and anything. I, I, I want to live here. Yeah, they just showed up. Okay. And I'm like, right. okay, you need to go back. You do yeah. The whole point of a visa <laughs> is to get access to the country before you come into it, uh, rather yes. rather than while you're in it. Although, yeah, yeah. there's there are some sort of shades of grey in that, aren't there? But let's not get. But I don't I don't get distracted again. Um, I want to make the point that I hear sometimes is that you know even for Portuguese people, this is the same thing of of a lack of fairness and equity and the interpretation of the law. You know, there is the law which might be. It might be an 80-20 thing. It might be as, as harsh as for foreigners and Portuguese people alike that the law is 20% and 80% of a process involving the government or lo national or local is interpretation by that government worker. And they do 100%. 100%. The same with the taxes. That's why I've consulted with five tax people and I've gotten five different opinions yes, there you on go. what's legal and how you do things. And even when you get tax residency and like all this craziness. And yep. so it's like, it's really aggravating. Uh, and it's really difficult, like really difficult for somebody that's trying to really determine how do I do this? What's the best way? What are the ramifications? Because yeah. all of this stuff, it's an art. It is not a science. And no, that's sure. where, you know, working with someone uh, with a company like ours comes in because we are, we are good with, the art of it, but yeah. 
even that said, my job has gotten a lot harder in the last 90 days. Yeah. So I think that context might help there, Mr. S. Uh, I think, you know, it, it, it go, as a foreigner moving into a country, you may well, of course, uh, experience uh, unfairness and, and challenge and difficulty. And it's all quite subjective and relative around the world. It's, it doesn't seem, I mean, by the by the nature of trying to get into a country, it's never going to be an easy process. Otherwise, <laughs> everyone would just be moving easily into other countries. And, and that it doesn't work like that, does it? Um, Huini too is saying so true. I'm not sure to which bit, whether it's unfair or whether the taxation <laughs> thing or whether it's 80-20, but um, do, you, you might want to expand that a little bit. Uh, we need to. So yeah, okay. So it's That's unfair. Mary. Hi, Mary. No question. And it's twenty percent law, eighty percent interpretation. Um, and it sounds like it's got getting a little bit more difficult because of that. We have the con the background context of the shift, the reorganisation, which is, I mean, it, you know, that is the new normal, isn't it? It's not like we've had a, a thing that has been stable that is being reorganised. You have been working in a, an atmosphere of instability and reorganisation for how long now? All the time you've been doing this. Uh, yeah, all the time I've been doing it, I, but but particularly the last you know little bit here because uh, this organization reorganization you know was it got approved like two years ago, but it, yeah. it keeps getting pushed off. But I don't know; it doesn't seem like it's getting pushed off this time, and it's supposed to take over like October 29th. What is it? Agency for Integration, Migration, and Asylum (A I M A). Yeah, yeah, so that's Which the new. Stuff. I mean, it's even it's had a new it's had a name change before it even got off the ground because it was going to be APMA, wasn't it? And what are we gonna What I, are we gonna call it? A AMA? I, I guess so. A <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> AMA, AMA, that's right. Yeah, it sounds like a it, hurricane. It's A I M A. So yeah, hurricane and I, AMA is. <laughs> Is bashing the coast at the moment. The coast and I put it in my Evernotes what that stands for because I just know somebody's going to be like, and what does that stand for? Yeah. You know, and I'm well, going to be like, wait. Do it because it might change again, Heather. Now, the other, the other reason for working with professionals, you made a point about, you know, some people say they go, they, they go DIY, they can, they can do it all themselves. And it's true, you can. And But now, with this in mind, um, when it comes to challenging the interpretation, that's when, when you might want a professional on your side. Um, and also the professional. Well, you, you don't want to get to the point of challenging because that means you got denied. Okay. And now you've got to, you know, it, you, you want to structure and be set up and be in the right position going in. Yeah. And you can't do that if you don't know ahead of time to be able to prepare pair ahead of time you know uh so so the time to talk to someone like me and it is really now if you're anywhere in that process because it, there's no hi look i have my mug your beautiful mug mary got me <laughs> if anyone Denmark. else wants to buy heather a mug that she can show on her <laughs> no 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good i'm good <laughs> and uh you know but it but you we, do, we don't know what's coming down the pike and we have to just be on our toes with what's coming down the pike. And yeah. if you're listening to people on Facebook or whatever that are saying, oh, I did it myself a year ago. I did it myself three months ago. I did it my, this is irrelevant information already. Yeah. And if you're listening, if you're reading books, like I had, a, I had a client give me this book, I'm moving to Portugal the other day. And I was like, okay, I'll look at this thing for a minute and look at it for half a second. And I already see outdated information. And the yeah. thing was just published like this year. It's 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 not even old. And so, you know, you 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 can't even put content out there. So these people that are like, oh, I watched a YouTube video on blah blah. Be careful. This stuff changes way too fast yep. to be that published and out there. And yeah, you know, you do it yourself decade, you know, in 2020, 2020 is forever ago Ancient when it history. comes to visas. It yeah. Is. 2021 is. I think in those days you could say you were staying at an Airbnb, for example, and that was fine. Mm -hmm. You just show an Airbnb booking and you're, you were home and dry as it were. So thank you, James. And the other thing, the other benefit of working with professionals, I would say, um, is that they, that when you do it yourself, that's the first one you do. When, when you're working with professionals, they're dealing with people who are doing it all day long um, and lots of different case studies and experience to draw upon. So, yeah, pros and cons for sure. Um, uh, you know, you know, Carl, I just want to say, because I, I feel like it's important. I worked with a professional on my visa. 
Yeah. And then I went on to do my parents and do my fiance and do my friend from Canada and, you know, got kind of wrangled into doing, uh, helping people. And so, um, you know, I, the reason I did that is because I am a real estate broker and I have my own business and I pay myself as a W2 employee and I, I did this stuff for tax strategy and I wasn't sure how it would be looked at. Yes. Um, and, you know, so basically I had a complicated scenario and so the help I got was turned out to really be my training and yes. was really invaluable. But, uh, you know, my clients are highly educated, extremely like <laughs> a type, uh, very on top of it. People most of mostly. Yeah, uh, yep. I have four attorney clients, you know, and that right there, it's like attorneys. These are attorneys, literally. Um not immigration attorneys, but attorneys, and they don't feel qualified to do this themselves. Fair enough. We are, we are in the last minutes. We're going to have to finish in about a minute or two. Um, you have to be a very special kind of person, I think it's fair to say, then, to do it yourself. I, uh, Mr. S, Mr. S has been quite insistent here. I did it this year, all DIY 2023. It's very, very, very simple and easy. Mm -hmm. I good say, for you. Good, good for you. And I think the word I, I was looking, I just did, I did a quick check online. Assiduous is the right word for Mr. S. And, and we're pleased for you. Uh, I, however, I, I don't think that's for everybody. Uh, and if you do want help, of course, there are a growing number of people who are <laughs> available to help you from their experience. Um, and, and that's another thing, isn't it? You, you, you can work with Portu this side. You can work with Portuguese folks who can help you. And you can work with people now, a growing number of people who've done it themselves, like Heather here, um, who, who speaks from her own experience as well as helping other people move here. So do well, what and, and that, that I think that's a really important point because I, I feel like the the immigrant experience side is really important. And really, we bring both together because I work uh, with a local Portuguese vendor that uh, – that works with me and does does my boots on the ground stuff and yeah. you know does that and so we really bring both sides together and I think that some of these immigration attorneys Portuguese folks and stuff are missing that piece and that that is really invaluable because the perspective is really key on meeting people's expectations and doing a thorough job. Very good. Tell us uh, where we can find you, Heather, because we've got to go and we'll see you oh, again. Oh, sure. Okay. Blue by, didn't it? Maybe we need to talk so much about 80s bands next time, but uh, where to find you? <laughs> so uh, I, I offer free chat at um, bootsontheground.pt.com. Okay, there it is on the screen right there. Heather, it's been wonderful talking to you. We're going to go out with uh, the, uh, the, the the end credits, as, as it were. And uh, just a quick reminder as well that we've got the uh, Getting Real on Portuguese Real Estate coming up next Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock with a star-studded panel. Uh, and I'll leave a link to it on the screen. You've been amazing, Heather. Take care and bye for now. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Thank you. Roll PT. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show Full of fun facts you need to know Carl brings a bell and the members show To the GMP morning show Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind The audience will do so in kind The little vanity Mixed with some insanity On the morning show With GMP Good morning Portugal And I'd like to welcome you to Another fantastic day Hey you gumpers